Hey everybody, Sonia, NJ Garden Teacher, and we are doing more winter gardening out here in January. It's a pretty nice day today. I believe it's in the 50s, but I have nine days, nine days until I have spinal surgery. So I have to do as much as I can do while I can. We have apple trees to prune. We have peach trees to prune. We have a grapevine to prune. And this entire area just needs to be cleaned up. Um, I'm hurting pretty well today. So I'm going to be doing what I can standing. And I'll also be just adapting what I have to do by sitting. And let me show you something really, really cool for people who need adaptive devices to garden. Corona Tools has these line of tools that were out and they are extendable. They are Corona Tools, like I said, and they're extendable tools. So this is a trowel. It tells you, you can turn and open it and you can move it any way you need to. So you can make it shorter, you can make it longer, and then you turn it the opposite way to lock it. So it's now locked in place. I have the trowel and I have the cultivator. So I'm just making sure, yep, that yeah, they are locked and ready to go. So if you are a wheelchair user, you can definitely use something like this to continue gardening. Uh, I'm thankful for, Corona tools for having supplies like this. And when Bullock Garden Project actually was able to supply the Glassboro Community Garden with some tools for inclusion, we made sure we had a supply of these because again, it's just important for everyone to be able to garden. So let's see what we can do today, not only from our chair, but we're gonna have to stand. So let's do that first. Let's go prune some trees. Right here is my apple tree. Pretty sad. There's some fruits that are on it that are just all dried up. But this is a hybrid. It's a Fuji and Yellow Delicious apple tree. My niece picked this out because she wanted to have an apple tree. That's why we got this. But it is in need of some severe, tender, loving care. Now, before I prune this tree, and pruning is not my forte, um, I had to go back and thank goodness, watch the videos from my master gardening classes. I did my class through Rutgers University Master Gardeners. Um, the person who taught us how to do pruning was wonderful. And let's walk through this together, okay? We're not experts, but let's walk through pruning together. Today, I'm because I'm pruning, I have my turtle gloves, so I'm wearing my turtle gloves, but I'm also going to put on my, oh, my gardening gloves. And I love these Showa Nitra gloves. They have been the best gardening gloves for me. So I always put on a little lotion before, these are clean, they have been washed. All of my garden gloves at the end of the season get washed, but because I just want a little extra hand protection, let's see. I mean, I'm gonna rock the turtle gloves with it. The first thing I need to do when looking at this tree, I'm envisioning the shape that I want it to be and if you can see this is not the shape that you want your apple tree to be at all so it looks like there's a couple places where there was like a hard cut or a hard trim i think they call it and what we want to do is make sure we're pruning this so we're opening it up for light and air because we want to definitely prevent the diseases that did not allow this tree to form really nice apples. And she was really mad about that. I don't know if you've seen a mad four-year-old before, but it ain't pretty, it ain't pretty. 
So in apple trees, they all have a central leader and we do. If you can try and see, this one, the yellow delicious part has this central leader and I believe it's to here. And the Fiji was grafted right here. So from here below, we have Yellow Delicious. And from here, this part, right in here, we have Fiji. I have to keep those in mind because I don't want to prune too much of the Fiji off. There's not as much Fiji growth as there is Yellow Delicious. So I'm gonna mostly be pruning off the Yellow Delicious uh, branches that we don't need. Have my tools. Hello, Corona. I have my Corona pruners. They have been sharpened, they have been cleaned, and they have been sitting and waiting for this day. So what I'm gonna do first is called thinning. I'm going to cut close, not right on the bark, but close to the bark. And I'm just going to thin some of these branches because I want to increase airflow to the tree. And I want to also increase its chances of receiving sunlight. This area gets Southern sun all day long. It has the most hours of sun. So I want this tree to be able to fruit well this year. These outside ones are actually going to prevent sun from getting to the inside. And we'll cut that. So this is just thinning. I'm going to do a hard prune right here at a 45 degree angle because this branch, you see how this is bending down? So I'm gonna do a hard prune. There we go. And the same here. It's not really healthy and it's not growing the way we want it to. I wish I had branch spacers because I think that would greatly benefit the way this tree is growing. But for right now, we just gotta do what I do. Um, we did some hard pruning so it'll strengthen these branches. And because right now, there was no way this thing was able to hold those apples. And I think that that's part of the problem. Another part is it just did not have enough air. So we're gonna get rid of some of these extra pieces like right in here at the crotch and I believe it's called the crotch. This is Fiji right here and this is the part that was grafted on but do you see how this is bendy and I mean one apple is going to break this branch so we're going to do a hard prune. I, I don't remember what the other name for it is but we're going to do it hard. I'm looking at the buds so I want to do it right above a bud. I think right here is good. 45 degree angle. That is going to allow this branch to just be stronger. And even though it has these other little ones on there, these can form buds. And if they have buds and flowers, there's going to be a better chance that it's going to produce a healthy apple and actually be able to hold the apple. As it was, there was no way it was going to hold that apple. So we gotta do what we gotta do. Let's speed it up and get this tree done. Don't be afraid to step back from your work. Take a look and see what else you need to do. And yes, I'm leaving the tags on here because I want to know which part is which. I'm not an expert in fruit trees. My jam is veggies. <laughs> so I need to have this identification there. But I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, Shade, that's causing shade. No tea, no shade. I like this better because this is going to be growing more like I want it to. It has more of a shape that's growing up. I'm really pleased with how this tree turned out. Lord knows if I messed it up, now she's five. So getting yelled at at a five-year-old is even worse. So 
let's move on and do the peach tree. With a peach tree, what we have to do is locate the primary branches. So here's the stem, primary branch here, and this one forked off into two primary branches and we're gonna get rid of the competition, cutting at a 45 degree angle. My Corona pruners have always been really great and I haven't needed my loppers. So I don't think I'm gonna need my loppers for this one either. Let's just go cut this, get rid of the competition, get this baby ready to grow peaches this summer. I'm not gonna cut the red that I see that's new growth and that's gonna be more productive. So I'm going to make sure I'm cutting older pieces, like so. Even though, my goodness, I really do need a chair, I'm not going to do it because all she has to do is fall and mess up this back even more. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. Um, I think this is pretty good. Getting rid of some of these tender ones, they will be okay. They will be okay. I just need this tree to produce fruit. I want some peaches this year. We had a few last year and the squirrels got to them. What do you think, YouTube? I think we did good. I think we did good. What is part two? I have to replant this grape. Now, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I'm going to be honest with you. I have no idea. I am I love vegetable gardening and I love fruit, but I have no problem going to one of my farmer friends and purchasing their fruit. So I think I just need to give it a try and let's see if I can replant this grape and see if I can train it along this cattle panel that I have here. There are still some gnarly leftover vines. I'm not gonna worry about those. I'm chasing sunlight right now, or it's chasing me. So let's get going. What wasn't a good thing, what wasn't a good thing is I really didn't have to put in a lot of effort to get this out. So I think, ugh, I think I'm glad that I, just decided to go ahead and do it. So what I'm gonna do, use my trusty groundhog here. Thank you to Brie Arthur, hashtag things I learned from Brie. The groundhog is amazing. I'm gonna dig right here. Let's put this down so you can see. And this is where we're gonna plant our grape. It has a pretty extensive root system already. And from everything I understand, that's a good thing. That's it for today. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking some time in the garden teacher's yard. And next time we're gonna do a little more. She's getting ready for surgery. I'm gonna still be wearing my cousin, Lady Alma. I'm still gonna be wearing her gear because I'm doing a couple things all in one day. I hope you really liked this video. If so, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below and share, hello, share the knowledge with your friends. I'll see you soon. Until next time, keep growing. Bye everyone.